What's up YouTube, Broken Solar Panel here, and uh, I'm going to give a little bit of an in-depth video on my Mega Blaster Junior, which is basically a um, response to um, uh, Mindy from Caramel Danson's question, how did you make that? This is a uh, in-depth video that shows kind of what went into making this. First I'll get kind of like a walk around of this thing. Now um, a couple days ago we had a severe thunderstorm warning and this thing actually sounded but uh, the rotator failed, the uh, controls failed, but I fixed it just by simply tapping them. Anyway, enough jibber jabber, let's get this rotator apart. Oh wait, no, first I gotta give a walk around. These cups here that project the sound from the speakers are um, uh, macaroni and cheese cups. Light control thing. Ugh. Anyway, um... <coughs> Sorry, I had a little bit of Coca-Cola before this. These are macaroni and cheese cups from uh, Kraft Macaroni and Cheese Microwavable Cups. I took the labels off, and I cut holes in them with the Rotozip Spiral Saw, aka Crazy Drill. And I also put some holes in here for the screws. And these speakers here are 8 ohm speakers. And uh, these little plastic things that are nailed on there project the sound out from the front of the siren. And this hook here is to mimic a crane hook. You know, like you're, when you're supposed to lift it off. Oh, and uh, just as a little bonus, before I start taking the rotator apart, here's my Thunderbolt siren I've been 3D printing so far. I got the rotator and the collector rings and brushes done. But, um, as you can tell, they're a little sticky, but... I don't have the rotator pulleys in there yet. Those are getting printed next. But, um, Do Space, which is the uh, organization that's printing my siren, um... So unfortunately their printer is down right now, so this might be a little bit of a delay. Anyway, let's get this rotator apart. Now this camera doesn't have its own lights, so I gotta use this flashlight. This is the inside of the rotator of the Mega Blaster Junior indoor warning siren. I've just taken the front cover off. This is it right here. There are all the screws. Anyway, right here is the rotator motor. Right here is the uh, is a 12 volts DC motor from Radio Shack that's power that gets powered by 3 volts DC when it is activated. It has a spiral gear on it right here that turns these other gears here, which are from a uh, dynamo charged flashlight that broke, and I just took the gearbox out of it, and now I have a perfect rotator for my. Mega Blaster Junior, and there was a little slot in this gear here that the light's shining on right here behind the wires that had the little notch that this rod, which was up to the head, uh, is connected to, and that's um, that's the rotating part. Now I can't really do a manual demonstration because of that spiral gear, but I can kind of move it back and forth for you. Like this. I had to hold the flashlight under my chin, and the flashlight I have is a monster. <laughs> <coughs> oh, there goes the Coca-Cola. Anyway, and right here are where the speakers connect. These two wires here, the orange and the black one, connect to these two brushes. Now, this isn't the highest quality camera. But what they are are modified safety pins. I modified some safety pins. Yes, the wood is a little bit cracked, but it still works. And those brushes are spring-loaded because they're modified safety pins. And these collector rings are made out of uh, galvanized sheet steel that are wrapped around the rod. And the wires are screwed in place by those two screws, all along with the brushes also being held in place by those two screws. Or the collector rings also being held in place by those two screws. The brushes are held by those two right there. And then that little wooden ring right there keeps the head from slipping out of the, the rotator box. So I can just see, I can do this and it won't and it won't come out. So um, I'm just going to give a little bit of a quick demo of the rotator in action here in a few seconds and uh, then we'll go on to the back side of where the speakers go. Now I'm taping with my 3DS XL right now, so, um, and the controls are down here. I have the rotation circuit up here. I'm going to go ahead and uh, turn the main power on. I'll show the controls more in depth after I show the rotation.
makes quite a bit of a grinding sound, but the siren drowns that out when the siren itself is on. Let's go ahead and turn off the rotator. Okay, now let's get into the uh, the back of the speakers and show how the speakers are connected. All right, here's the back side. <coughs> here are the speakers. I'm going to go ahead and get around to the front here. The speakers come out. Here's where the, um, uh, the head mounts to the stick. Here are each, and this one's a 32 ohm speaker, but all the other ones are 8 ohms. See, here's 8, 8, and 8. Couldn't find an 8 ohm speaker there, so I just put a 32 ohm, one that would fit anyway. But it seems to work fine anyway. Here's the bus they all wire to in parallel, right here. And these two wires jump them so that way they can connect in parallel. And those two wires there go down to the rod, which then go down to the collector rings, which then go to the brushes, which then go to those wires, which plugs in, then goes down stairs to the controls where the amplifier and timer circuit are, which is what generates the tones. So I have um, different colored wires going to each speaker, except for these two, they're both black, because I couldn't find another color. This lead's sort of broken, but it's still connected to the speaker, so it still works fine. And the speakers are mounted with screws and nuts and bolts and washers. <coughs> and at the same time, with those same screws, mount the um, uh, the projector horns or cones, megaphones or whatever, that project the sound outwards. And here's the back side. I have this little thing here, so that way those screws don't get in the way of this part mounting on there like that. Yeah, I'm recording with my 3DS, so it's not the best quality. And um, those screws just go all the way through the sides of the the rotating pole, a rotational rod. So that way it'll hold it nice and tight. So now let's get into the controls. Oh, and before I get to the controls, I have this little cardboard model of a Thunderbolt, um, Thunderbolt tornado siren here. It doesn't actually work, but I can sort of make it rotate. doesn't have the bug screen, but you can use your imagination. You can probably make it look like it's working with uh, stop-motion magic. There we go. Okay, let's get into the controls of the Mega Blaster. Mega Blaster Jr. It's a little incandescent light bulb. <coughs> we uh, have quite a bit of a setup here. I already have it unlocked. Yeah, I have a lock here and a key. And right here is a voice module, so I can put a voice message over the siren's speakers if I want to talk over it. Oops, hang on. Turn those switches off. Right here is the main power switch. This turns the whole thing on or off. Right here is the switch for the rotation. That turns the rotator motor on or off. And right here is the regular circuit. Here's the switch that turns the siren on or off. Hang on. There we go. That'll fix it sometimes. It's really just this yellow circuit board. Ah! You know what, let's just continue, even though the uh, picture is yellow. It's just a color glitch on my 3DS XL. I don't know how, why that happens. Anyway, um, over here we have the um, regular circuit that transforms the uh, voltage from 12 volts DC down to 3 volts DC at, at most. Uh, it's got one of these things wired up the right way, and the other um, uh, volt regulator is wired up in series. And only two of the power legs, which... Um, happens to, it looks like it splits the voltage in half from 5 volts, probably 2.5 volts DC. 2.5 volts DC, yeah. 
Over here we have the... Oh, now it's back to normal again. Now it's not. Here we have the siren circuit. Now recently in my last video of the Mega Blaster, the siren circuit started to fail and sound like a like an underpowered P50 towards the end of the test. But I took out that old chip, I don't know where it is, but and I replaced it with a new one. Let me get the picture back to normal. I'll just point at the light. There we go. Oh, I didn't fix it. Anyway, um uh, I replaced the chip because I made both chips easily replaceable because they're in their own little uh, sockets so they can actually be replaced if need be. Over here, this plug here that goes to the wires um, uh, connects to the weather radio I have up here. Um, seriously? There. It's a weather radio. I have uh, some weather radio uh, double-sided foam tape to the wall because if I put a screw in it, that would ruin it. And I have them going up to these wires over here, going to those two AC adapters. That white one goes to the siren, and the black one goes to the uh, weather radio. It's a Midland NOAA Warning Watcher Advisory All Hazards Radio. Um, uh, have, um, uh, down here, you can't really see. There's supposed to be there's an outlet down here somewhere. Right down there is where the extension cord that plugs everything in here is plugged into. And what's more convenient is we have this thing mounted in our tornado shelter, which is basically just the laundry room with lots of bricks and uh, uh, hard covering walls to protect us from flying debris and stuff. Um, uh, and a piece of plywood that mounts everything on there connected to these two studs. Um, uh, the vent duct. And here's the um, another uh, power cord that uh, disk drive cord that connects the wires. Now the other one was just barely too short. The extension cord that goes up there was just barely too short. So I took this um, little extender I made out of just some extra parts I had laying around, twisted some wires together, and made one that makes it just long enough uh, to reach to upstairs where the siren head is mounted. And right here are two volt regulators because without those, the siren um, circuit and volt regulator circuit um, power merges together and um, the siren sounds like it's on crack or something it sounds like it's been drinking it sounds like it's drunk or whatever it just doesn't sound right and it's not very loud um, but I managed to split those oh, crap it's yellow again split those two circuits by simply adding volt regulators um, in parallel to this uh, main power source that goes to the wires <clears throat> one of them is just converts it directly from 12 volts DC to 12 volts DC, but still manages to split the circuit with this little uh, ceramic capacitor. Um, uh, and it goes all the way through these wires to the amplifier. And we have one more that converts the um, power to 5 volts DC. So I think that's the 5 volt. I don't know, they look the same. Anyway, one of them is the 12 volts, the other one's the 5 volt. I don't know which one's which, but anyway, the other one's a 5 volts DC that connects to the siren circuit in parallel. But these two are different circuits. They're not connected to the same volt regulator circuit. Therefore, splitting the power so it doesn't doesn't make it <coughs> sound weird, sound like it's on drugs or whatever. And this big capacitor is what allows it to do the whaling signal, more or less. Um, uh, I tried putting a super capacitor in parallel with the main power. That didn't work too well. Uh, but also, I accidentally broke the super capacitor, so I'm going to have to order another one online for the Thunderbolt. And uh, this uh, button that's marked D means down. That makes it wail down when I push down on it. Here, I'm going to see. Maybe maybe you can hear it from upstairs. I'm going to activate it and see if you can hear it from upstairs. Power. Anyway, that's the whaling signal, and right here we have a button labeled P for pulse. That's what makes it pulse tone. This shorts out the chip when I push on it, and the chip reactivates when I let go of it. Sort of. Well, it basically just bypasses the um, resistors and makes it silent until I let go of the button and the resistors take over again. Let's demonstrate that button real quick. And uh, over here we have an H that stands for high. I can push that on and off, and that puts uh, another resistor, a red, red, red resistor, in parallel with this one, connects it every time I push it on, and disconnects it whenever I push it off, which um, I don't push off, I just let go. Let me demonstrate that one.
You know, that high-low signal kind of reminds me of a Thunderbolt 1003. Uh, yeah. This is the amplifier. It's at LA4440. Sorry, I'm making this video so long, but I like making this stuff. Here's an LA4440IC. That is the amplifier. That amplifies the sound. Without that, it sounds like a Thunderbolt without a blower. Not very loud at all. Anyway, let's um, uh, demonstrate some of the signals. And, uh, yeah, let's demonstrate some signals. I'm going to do tests without rotation, but first I'm going to rotate the head so that way it's pointing towards the camera. Then, we'll, then I will do the um, signals, each one for about 10 seconds without rotation. That was all the signals from alert to whoop. Now I'm going to be um, uh, demonstrating one more thing I forgot about the controls, and that's how the attack signal actually works. There is a resistor that um, connects in parallel to this big capacitor when I push the down button, which sort of uh, limits the uh, power flow of the capacitor, which makes it do that whale down signal. That's it. Now I'm going to be connecting the voice modulator, recording device, and demonstrating that. Alright, this is the voice modulator. Voice recorder runs on 9 volts DC battery, but I think the battery is probably about half dead because the voice is a little bit scratchy, but it's still, um, it's still audible. You can still hear it and most of the time understand it. So I'm going to record a message and then I'm going to play it back. get the color fixed first. There we go.
recently tried to find a new battery for the uh, voice modulator, but I couldn't find one. Now I'm thinking about finding a way to connect the voice modulator in parallel to this thing, but this thing runs on 9 volts DC, but the power going into it runs on 12 volts DC. So all I need is a 7809 um, uh, volt regulator, but I can't find such a thing at Radio Shack for some reason. Only 7812s and 7805s. Um, uh, but if I can find one, I will um, mount this thing in a separate box and then plug it into the um, power source. I have a little parallel plug right here I can plug it into. And it'll be another hole right up here I can put the wires through. And then uh, when I turn the main power on, the power to the voice regulator, voice uh, recording playing device will um, uh, also power on. But it won't play anything or record anything until one of these buttons is pushed. The other, the play button's in the back here. And the siren sound, the siren itself is louder than the the voice recorder because the siren is actually running on the AC adapter, but the voice is running on a battery, and batteries can die. So I'm gonna go ahead and lock this thing up. Set this on the furnace. So uh, anyway, when this radio weather radio is triggered, the Mega Blaster um sounds off with this but what's uh, unfortunate is the mega blaster for some weird reason isn't as loud uh, as it's supposed to be when the weather radio triggers it than when the um, power switch triggers it so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a quick little test one that uh, runs with the power switch and then one more that I trigger with the weather radio power switch first then the weather radio I'm going to be doing this test without rotation So now I'm going to lock up the controls in the way they're supposed to be, and then sign off. These power switches stay on, but this one stays off, so when this weather radio triggers it, it turns on automatically. Of course it sounds an alert because I'm not going to be there if it automatically turns on to push the other buttons. So now it is locked. And now, this is Broken Solar Panel signing off. I hope you like this video. Please subscribe, comment, rate, and uh, we'll see you next time. Bye.